In this video, I'll be demonstrating and discussing how to perform a fecal egg count. This is a very important procedure for estimating parasite infestation in small ruminants and other animals. In order to do a fecal egg count, some of the things you'll need include flotation solution, a counter, gram scale, tea strainer, pipettes and popsicle sticks, a 30 milliliter syringe, McMaster slides and some disposable cups, and of course, a microscope. It's best to use a microscope with a 100 power magnification that has a mechanical stage to hold and move your slides around. I personally prefer to weigh out my sample rather than using a cylinder, although that certainly works. You zero out the weight of the cup and add two to four grams of feces. And I always like to be as close to four grams as possible whenever I do a sample. Once you've weighed out your sample, record the weight of the sample to the nearest tenth of a gram. You'll divide this number into 100 and use that result as a multiplication factor for the total number of worm eggs you find. With the amount recorded, you're now ready to get it into solution. Using your syringe, pull up 26 milliliters or 26 cc's of flotation solution. Eventually, this will all be added to your sample, but I like to start off with just about half of it, just enough to wet the sample. Then using your popsicle stick, you want to thoroughly break apart those pellets. For this purpose, it's nice to have a cup that has ridges on the sides. Once you have all the pellets broken up, you'll add the rest of your flotation solution, which again is a total of 26 milliliters. Make sure it's stirred in very well into the solution. Then you'll use a clean cup, put the tea strainer in place, and pour the solution through the tea strainer and allow it to drain. Now that I've given my solution a couple of minutes to drain through the tea strainer, I'm using the popsicle stick to press more of the liquid through. And once I've done this, I'll take the remaining solids to dispose of them and I'll retain the solution for examination. Now you're ready to add the solution to the McMaster slide and I like to stir it up about 25 or 30 times immediately before I draw the solution out. You'll use the pipette for this. And I like to try to draw from about the middle of the column of water. There's a little bit of finesse to getting the solution to go into the chamber and not over or under it, but with some practice you'll get there. And then I refill the pipette to fill the other chamber. Now you'll transfer your slide onto your mechanical stage. Set your microscope power to 100x magnification and adjust your focus. I like to use the counter to keep track of the number of nematode eggs I find as I'm searching through the grids. On the left, you see a drawing and a picture of strongyl eggs. And this is predominantly what we're looking for when we're doing a fecal egg count in small ruminants. The homuncus, ostratagia, and trichostrongyls are very difficult to distinguish and differentiate even under 100 power magnification. 
It's also good to take note of the general presence of tapeworm eggs and coccidia oocysts, even though we're not directly counting them, as that can be an indication of other problems, particularly if the animals have other symptoms. Something that's not discussed often is the amount of distracting things that are in a sample when you look under the microscope. In this field of view, there are no nematode eggs. The perfectly round, empty circles are air bubbles, and there can be a lot of them. And there's also a lot of pieces of partially digested plant material, which can be pretty distracting as well. What you're seeing now is a good scope cam picture of a strongyl egg. And whether this is homunculus, ostratagia, or trichostrongyl, which are together known as the hot group, is really hard to distinguish under 100 power magnification, so we just count them all the same, and that's our fecal egg count. In this picture, you have two very good tapeworm eggs. They are triangular on one end and rounded on the other. I like to refer to them as roughly the shape of a baseball diamond. Now we'll look at a video of the slide I just prepared. I like to start off by placing a portion of the slide that has some print on it directly under the eyepiece to get my focus fairly close. And then as I adjust, I immediately here see two football shaped nematode eggs. Then we move down one field of view at a time, staying within the grid lines, looking for that shape. It's easy to get distracted by all the debris in this sample, but again, that's mostly just partially digested plant material. Here's another nematode egg to the right. The McMaster slides have six grids in each chamber for a total of 12 grids. So you'll go down one grid at a time, and when you get to the bottom, you move over and start back up the next, keeping count as you go. You do have to adjust your fine focus from time to time, such as right now as this football-shaped nematode egg to the upper right comes into view. There's another at the upper left peeking out from under a grid line. In a moment, there's another one. And there on the right is a nice air bubble. It's empty, nothing in it. And as we get to the top, we've counted two of the grids. And really, you're just continuing to do this until you get done. Once you've counted all the worm eggs, it's important to write this information down somewhere that you can keep track of it. You may want to share this information with your veterinarian. And remember that any treatment options for parasites should only be implemented on the advice of a veterinarian. Also, many veterinary offices can perform fecal egg counts for you, as well as the North Carolina Veterinary Diagnostic Lab System and other private laboratories. Of course, no job is finished until the cleanup is done, and it's important to thoroughly rinse out your slide and your pipettes and dispose of any used cups. I'll also mention that this is not a kitchen sink. This is a laboratory where all types of samples are frequently handled. It's really important to thoroughly dry your McMaster slide also, including inside the chamber, especially if you're about to immediately reuse the slide to do another sample, because if you don't get it thoroughly dry inside, you'll have a lot of air bubbles in that next sample. For this, I use a piece of folded up paper towel. If you have an air compressor or a can of compressed air, blowing this out works very nicely too. And for one final note, although I don't always wear rubber gloves when I do fecal egg counts, I do always wash my hands. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I wish you much success with your livestock.